Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. Now later in Jesus' ministry, his own disciples will say, just show us the Father and it will suffice. How many of you remember that in the Gospels? They, they, just, just show us God and then it'll be good enough. And he says, what was Jesus' answer? Have I been with you so long a time? He said, if you've seen me, you've seen who? The Father. I came to show you the Father. Now, in Matthew's Gospel, we're introduced to Jesus as a baby being born. In Luke's Gospel, we are. But in John's Gospel, we are not. Turn with me to John chapter 1. I want to show you something. When John introduces the, this Jesus, he does it in a, in, a, in a little bit what I call big picture form. He starts off here in John chapter 1. You guys probably know this one by heart, but in the beginning it says was the Word. And the Word was with God and the Word what? Was God. And he was in the beginning with God and all things came into being through him. And apart from him, nothing came into being that has come into being. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shines in the darkness. But the darkness, it said, did not comprehend it. Now, there was one, a man that was sent from God. His name was John. And he came as a witness to testify about the light so that they might believe through him. Now, he was not the light, but he came to testify about the light. He was, remember John the Baptist said, behold the the what of God? The Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Now, there was the true light which comes into the world and enlightens every man. And he was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. And he came to his own. Here, the word came to his own. And that those, it says, and those who were of his own did not even receive him. But as many as received him to them, he gave the right to become the children of God, even those who believe in his name, who are who are born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but rather born of God. And th- thus it says, verse 14, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we saw his glory, glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the word, and the word here in Greek for word is actually logos. The word became flesh. The logos became flesh. Now, logos, we actually translate to a word in English, logo. And logo is, I mean, it's interesting. If you know the Greek, it's actually kind of deeper meaning because the, logo, the logos, the, 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 how we say, the very idea the very expression. A logo is like an idea or an expression, a trademark of a company. Remember the Nike swoop, a little swoop? They they made that logo so famous that they didn't even have to write the word Nike with the swoop anymore. They could just put the swoop. And people go, oh yeah, that's Nike. You know, I mean, you've seen it on shirts, you know, just a little swoop there. You know, oh, that's a Nike product. They They don't even have to put the word because the idea, the expression of the company is is insinuated just by that little mark, that little logo. And this is the word here in Greek when it says, in the beginning, it says, the word, the logos, became what? Flesh. The very idea, the very expression of God became flesh. This one that was the very representative, he was in the beginning with God, he was there when all things were made, now, some people say, I don't get that. But if you know Greek or Hebrew, you read in Hebrew, in the, in the book of Genesis, in the beginning, God created the heavens. Or he created everything. He said, and then he said, let us. Now, this is weird because in Hebrew, there's actually a triune plural, Elohim. Him is the, they have first person, that's just individual, then second person, like two of us. And then they have a, 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 a thing which we don't have in our language. When three are put together, him is three, 
let us three make man in our image. You guys read it, right? Let us, let us make man. Who was talking? God. Who is he talking to? Well, he's got his son, right? Because we know the Logos was his son. He became flesh. and So he and his son are talking, and we know that it says the, the Spirit of God hovered over the surface of the deep. So we, you know, some people say, I don't know about the Trinity. I go, well, the idea of the Trinity is there. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So there was three parts talking saying, let us make man in our image. Now, some of you will say, I don't get that. Well, we're made in his image. Look at us. We got a body. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you what? Seen the Father. We got a spirit, right, inside of us, our spirit. God has his spirit, his Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. And then you have the one, the mind. I, I, I like to think of the Father as the He's got it all covered, right? I mean, he knows everything. All knowing. So I, I look at it like, well, we're, we're body, mind, spirit. Why couldn't God be body, mind, spirit? But he's so complete, he can say, let us do this. We'll make him like us. And then he makes man. And some people, they get all freaked out about it. I, I just go, hey, cool. He's a lot bigger and knows more than me. That's, I can't do that, but he did. And he made us in his image. But he came and revealed himself to us. And this is the greatest thing of the Christmas message that we get to declare today, is that God did reveal himself to man. And John says he came to reveal grace and truth. Man, I don't know about you, but anybody appreciative that God is a God of grace? Grace is unmerited favor. You don't earn it. It's because of how great he is. In fact, Daniel, when Daniel prayed, he said, God, oh God, please do not deal with us according to what we deserve. Deal with us according to your great compassion. Right? Remember the prayer of Daniel for the people? I'm like, Daniel, good. That's a good one. You know, don't deal with me what I, what I deserve, God. Deal with me according to your character, to your great mercies, your great compassions, your great grace. That's what we need. And indeed, God did send in the, in the likeness of human flesh his only begotten son. Now, John goes on, tells us in, you know, John 3.16, for God so loved the world he gave his only begotten son. Why? Whoever would believe in him should not perish. If you believe in the Lord, you don't have to worry about ever going to hell. Now, when I say believe in him, I don't mean like saying, well, I know he's there. That doesn't get you in. Okay, I'm sorry. That's, the devil believes in God. That doesn't get him in. Okay, I mean, that, that, that doesn't, that's not going to pass for getting you into eternity in heaven. It's, do you receive the gift that was given? When it says believe, it, he says, it, it actually says believe and receive. All you have to do is receive that. It's a gift, isn't it? And it, if it says it's a gift in Ephesians, lest any man would boast. It's just a gift that is given, and all you have to do is, is receive that gift. If I've got a present for you, and I say, here, here's something for Christmas. I want to give it to you. What do you have to do to get it? Take it. Same with salvation. God says, I want to give you a gift of everlasting life. Would you like it? Some people are like, what's the catch? It, it, I said, well, it takes a little belief, right? I mean, you have to believe that he's offering it. Because if you don't believe it, if you don't believe it, and they're going, here, here it is, and you don't believe it, are you going to receive it? you would be like, I don't even believe it. So they're probably not really giving away those things free. You know what's funny is, one time there was a giveaway where they were giving away free televisions. Down at the, I like one of those big mega stores, in Arizona, this happened in Arizona. And people were like, I don't believe it. And they didn't go get one. And, you know, the people who did go get them were like, we told you, why didn't you go? Well, I didn't believe it. And here they are coming in with these new TVs going, I got a new TV, free. And they're like, I thought it was like, 
I don't know. I just couldn't believe they would get... All you had to do is show up, and they gave it to you. See, if you don't believe it, right, they could be telling you, this is the greatest gift ever. God wants to give you everlasting life. I don't really think they're giving that away. Besides, that's probably really expensive. At the time, those TVs were really expensive. But they were giving them out. And all you had to do to get one was go say, here I am, I'll take one. That was it. One per customer. I mean, the Lord's doing the same thing with salvation. He's going, I want to give this gift. And some people are like, I don't think, it's probably really expensive. I don't think they'd give that away. Well, the truth is, it was really expensive to pay for the sins of the world. It cost God his only son's life. That's a pretty high price. But we couldn't afford to pay for it no matter what. So God says, you can't afford it. Let me give it to you. And I'm not giving it to you because of how good you are. I'm giving it to you because of how good I am. See, it's because of God's character that we even can talk about salvation. It's what God did. All the glory goes to God. He's the one that authored the salvation. He's the one who paid for it. It's like he paid for all the free TVs. Here you go. He paid for all the free salvation that is available to man. And lest any man would boast, because some guys, I don't know if you run into those Christians that think, <coughs> good thing I'm in the club. They needed me, man, you know. They're a bunch of messed up people. That's why God put me in the group. You know, they need one person had it together. You ever run into that Christian? Yeah. That had it together one? Where did they come from? And didn't the scripture say, all have sinned and fall short? Except for that guy. That guy is sure that he didn't sin. He's the only one in the group that was perfect. And Listen, if you're perfect, you don't even need to hear the rest of the message. You're excused. I mean, it really wouldn't account for you. You wouldn't get it. Because the, the gospel of salvation isn't for the ones that have it perfect. It's for the ones that need a Savior, right? I mean, Jesus died for us because we're not perfect. I mean, how many sins does it take to keep us out of heaven? Like a whole bunch? Or just one? What if you only, what if you lived a really great life, but you blew it in just one thing? One indiscretion. Would that be enough to make you miss the mark? What, what, what what's the scripture say? That they fall short? That's what missing the mark means. Like, um, it's actually an archery term. When you shoot the arrow and it, it doesn't quite reach the target. I mean, it only takes one sin to make us go off, off base, just uh, off aim, just a little, and we wind up and we, and we fall short. And all of us, the Bible says, have fallen short of the glory of God. We all miss the mark. But isn't it nice that it says that if any man confess Jesus as Lord and believe in his heart that God raised him from the dead, he shall be saved? Because God wants to give you a gift. And all it takes is you believing that and receiving that, that gift that's offered to you. Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com Mahalo and God bless.